Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Yep, we're still doing pandemic projects. Unfortunately, uh, the pandemic continues to rage and we're actually seeing a resurgence in some places. So if you're involved in that, please take care, stay safe, wear your masks, maintain your social distance and the like. And if you're helping the frontline uh, folks try to get through this, uh, if you are a frontline first responder, emergency personnel, teacher, trying to help folks remotely learn. Wow, what a challenge all of that is. So uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, we're going to get on one of these projects that, that I mentioned uh, in one of my previews. I had, uh, acquired a bunch of these uh, what I'll call distributed returns lot reels and rods. In this case we have a Shakespeare Tiger and we have it on a combo missing the tip. But the Tiger doesn't, uh, doesn't work. So uh, we're going to try and take this apart. And we'll see what the uh, what the core issue here is. So the Tiger line usually sold in a combination. It's almost identical to most of the reels that Shakespeare makes on the lower end. It uh, has a, um, a lower end technology, probably a single ball bearing. It's made with lesser quality materials. We can see here we have a rusted uh, series of screws. I'm hopeful that I can get those case screws out. This is a 50 size reel. It's nice. It was appropriately paired with the right um, um, pole. And uh, I, I, the, the, you got a lot of dust and things which would indicate that it was probably sitting in a warehouse. So this one is interesting. I can turn it by hand, but if I try to turn it by the handle itself, there's a lot of resistance there. So I'm not quite sure what may be broken inside or if, if this reel can even be saved. But that's kind of the, uh, the mission of the moment, is let's go figure this out, see if we can save it or not. So I'm going to start by just putting a little bit of uh, penetrating oil onto those rusted screws. Start by removing the exterior pieces. I'm going to do that with the spool first. It almost looks like this spool's got some mold or stuff on it, so it's probably been sitting in a warehouse for a while. I'm just hoping that maybe it's been bad grease and this thing got returned because it was a broken tip on the rod. And I think what we're going to find is some of this uh, substandard material here. It's just caused the thing to rust. Here's a steel shaft, not a stainless steel shaft, rust on uh, the notion there. This kind of tells the story of what happened to this reel. There's no question about it. It's all sanded and uh, that probably led to the problems that are being encountered in this reel. We're going to see if we can save it anyway. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to believe that this is a through cap screw here holding the handle on. And boy, this one probably got drowned. And this is kind of a shame. I know this stuff gets returned uh, a lot. And it's unfortunate that uh, people make mistakes and then go back and, and ask for their money back in that. This spring just came out of here. That is the most unusual thing in the world to me. Uh, that spring certainly doesn't belong in a screw cap, but it was in there. So uh, maybe when they uh, when they dunked this reel, it uh, uh, landed in a bed of springs. I don't know. All right, let's see if we can get these screws out here. If we can't, we're not going to be able to go much further. Take the bump guard off first. This is a good time to tell you a couple of things. Yeah, I'm working on something that, that obviously got trashed. Uh, I'm never sure what's inside these reels. We are seeing a lot of sand and things. And if that's the case, uh, what I use all the time is probably recommended. Wear a, a glove, protect yourself from whatever the, the stuff inside may be. Also, uh, take pictures along the way. I'm doing that by way of the video. Use your cell phone camera, use a, uh, a regular digital camera, heck, use film if you want. Just take pictures along the way, and that way if you, uh, if you get stuck, you'll have something to look back on in terms of how did these pieces and parts come off. Speaking of stuck, kind of stuck there. It's unfortunate this uh, rust has kind of corroded the slots in the screw. If that's the case, it probably would be history right there. Parts are not available for these. Uh, this is a product of pure fishing, uh, that conglomerate, but the lower end reels do not get the support. 
You can still find uh, parts for 50 year old pens from for fishing, but you can't find uh, replacement parts for this type of a reel. All right, I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to get this click ratchet off. I'm going to try first with the pliers. This should come off, but of course we've got so much rust on here that it's quite possible that this thing is just kind of rusted to the shaft. You would want to take this off. Oh, we'll get it off. There you go. There's a ratchet and there's a shim wash on top of that. That enables us to take the rotor off. You can see just the buildup of all of the rust and stuff here. So these reels are kind of introductory reels. They came on a combination probably sold for $39 with the rod and uh, they're intended generally speaking for um, casual anglers as opposed to daily although there's a lot of folks out there that will use them regularly and uh, they're, they're generally not the highest level of um, technology and engineering it's usually with single ball bearing and, uh, and you've seen here We've got steel as opposed to stainless. We have steel screws and the like. And generally all that adds up to issues. So I'm in here and I'm seeing that there's more salt and there's more buildup in the, um, the cavity. All right, well now this is, well, it's stuck. There's, I'm not gonna deny it's stuck, but it's, it's doing a little bit better. But sand throughout. Okay, there's a little hook on this eccentric. This is, this is the, the old style anti-reverse dog which is also kind of seized up here this should be swinging much more freely we're going to take this off notice the orientation of it the spring is at the top of this and it also loops over the back end of the dog so let's go ahead and pull that off well let's go ahead and try and pull that off this is a plastic carrier and it seems like it's fairly well stuck on there it shouldn't be and then we've got a bearing in here, and I'm not sure if the bearing's turning. So the bearing is seized to the inner race. It, it is moving, but it's, uh, well, actually, the whole bearing is seized. I'm just uh, looking at that now. This is the, all tracks are turning there. We'll try and free that up. I'm going to guess that's, that's the problem here. If the bearing is frozen, it's certainly not going to operate easily. And that's actually not a bad thing, I guess, in terms of repairs and schemes because bearing can generally be replaced. But if you have a broken piece underneath, which we're going to get to in just a moment, if we have a broken piece there, then we're going to have more of an issue because those parts aren't available. But the industry generally uses pretty much a standard setting in these bearings. And we're going to fight that one the whole way. Let's take the case off now. There's one more screw up top here. That's why you had to remove the rotor. Or I say there's more than one way to skin a cat if that's the old adage there. We have to take a couple of these different pieces off here. I'm thinking I will be able to get that assembly off. Now we should be able to remove the side plate. I'm going to just use a razor knife as a wedge. Boy, that's just not, uh, not interested in coming free. Yep. All right, you just have to work it kind of gently and gingerly. I guess right now is we're probably caught on this as well. We have a bushing and a little shim washer on that. Nothing bad there. It's kind of hoping that that whole thing would have come down. It won't. Even evidence here we have the, uh, the screw for the crosswind block is also rusted. It's also loose so that may have been an issue here as well. I don't see the evidence of the sand inside the case. That's a good thing. We'll take the axle shaft out. I'll take the gear out. The gear is not scarred. That's a good, good thing as well. Crosswind block is good. Crosswind gear appears to be good. So the point of failure here is clearly this bushing. 
on the pinion gear. And it may be twofold. It may be that we have a bent axle. That I can't say. This I can say is an issue. And it's, yeah, it's totally frozen. So we're going to stop the video here. Let me just put all my pieces in this parts tray. I'm going to go to a, a product that I've used a few times. One of our viewers actually sent it in. It's called Croil. And... Um, Made by Cano, I guess. This stuff is like um, Master Blaster or PB Blaster, whatever that uh, thing is called, but just in a total liquid form. It's good for a soak. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a little um, cup, uh, maybe a four ounce cup or something. I'll put that in there. I'll load it up with this. We're going to let it do its uh, stuff. And we'll come back and see if we can't free that, uh, that bearing off of there. Because that's that's why this reel isn't working. Okay, if not, we've learned something about uh, how Shakespeare tigers are made and uh, maybe how to either take care of them better or avoid them in the purchase. All right, I'm going to shut this off. We'll be back. Uh, who knows when we'll be back. We're going to let this stuff do its work. But I promise to make this conclude uh, one way or another. So I've returned now. And uh, this thing was soaking for quite some time. Again, I use this stuff called Cano Croil, or however that might be pronounced. And I need to give proper credit where credit is due. The viewer that sent it in, his name is Bill. Apparently Bill bought a case of this quite some time ago and it will last a lifetime. He was kind enough to share one of these with me. But thank you, Bill, for, uh, for letting that uh, go. Oh, here's another tip. If you ever lose the tip of a uh, squirt bottle, an electrician's uh, wire nut cap generally will work as well. Uh, just fraught with all kinds of great stuff today. Huh? So we soaked this. I did have, I had the opportunity to use that stuff before, and I learned that you cannot put it in a plastic cup to, uh, to try and unfreeze. It's going to rot the cup. So I put it in a glass, a glass container this time, and uh, it didn't eat through the glass. Okay, so the bearing was shot. We got it moving. Uh, but I did want to show you one other thing I had to do, and I don't recommend this uh, unless it's an absolute, uh, can't get it done any other way, willing to risk breaking the reel and everything else. I had to knock the burring off. The burring was still frozen, however, it was moving a little bit. To knock that burring off, the first thing you want to do is put the screw that holds the rotor cup back on at the risk of damaging the threads on the end. Don't ever hit this end uh, with anything. Next I just inverted it. I took a, a closed end wrench that's the same diameter as the bearing itself and I shocked it. The old shock and awe. I took a dead blow hammer. I hit the arm of the wrench with equal pressure on both sides and I was able to break it free and you can see that that, that came off. So we, we've got a good chance of um, salvaging this reel. And uh, one of the things I had to do then was to find the replacement bearing because this bearing is totally shot. It's frozen. And uh, I have a box of bearings. Some people uh, see the, um, the previews I do from time to time. And I show you, you know, I got a reel without a spool. Or I got a reel missing a handle. And I tell you that it's not worth uh, trying to go restore those reels just because of parts cost. Well, one of the things I do is I strip down the reel and I save the the screws and I save the handles if handles are on there and the spools and so on. One of the things I do is I just accumulate a bunch of bearings. Well, this isn't going to be luck. I went through my tray and I found the bearing that matches. I just got lucky. Just got lucky. The inside diameter is the same, the outside diameter is the same, and the cheat cut is the same on that bearing. So um, the uh, chances that we'll have success in putting this back together is pretty good. All right, well, we still have that rusted shaft there, and we certainly don't want to reinstall with that rust on there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just kind of try and hose it off a little bit with a penetrating oil. I'm just trying to find my, my brass brush. 
I'm going to use a brass wire brush just to see if we can't clean this up a little more. What's really important to me is this channel here. And that's why you put the box wrench on. You don't want to bang this side or the other side if you are going to hit it. And again, hitting is the last resort, right? Uh, it's when you when you said, I can't go any further, the reel is shot. I'll take one more chance at it. Here's a swing. Take one more swing at it. How do you like that? Um, this is a flat side, so I think I can probably use a flat, very fine file. Maybe just kind of see if we can't get some of that up. The bearing won't be spinning on the flat side. It's only going to spin on the shoulders here. So let's just see if we can't do that a little bit better. Okay, and then normally I would uh, oil a bearing, but I'm going to pack this bearing in grease. Just uh, there's nothing wrong with packing a bearing in grease. Normally I just oil them because the applications that we're using the, um, the reels in typically involve salt water and sand. We saw this reel got sanded and uh, sand getting into the inside of the reel will typically have a, uh, um, a grinding effect if you don't wash it out and get it out right away. Well, if you use the, the grease as opposed to the oil, the grease is like a gum and it will stick. So uh, it may be exactly what happened here. I don't I don't doubt it because the uh, what happened here was this real uh, had a frozen bearing, but it also had evidence of salt inside. All right, I'm going to put some on the inside where we just kind of cleaned it up because the inside race is going to rest on that. We'll put that in there. We'll make sure that the bearing spins nicely. Probably going to be a better reel than when it started. All right, let's go back to reassembly then. Let's see if we can make this work. So we had the anti-reverse. We left that on. There is some a little bit of mud in there, so let's go ahead and clean that out. And I didn't spend much time cleaning this. It's not mud. It's actually the rust from this. I didn't spend much time cleaning it out because I thought if it was going to be a lost cause, there's no sense wasting your time there. We greased the bearing, but we didn't grease the pinion gear. You want to check. I'm looking here, and it looks like the pinion gear is okay. It might just be an optical illusion to me. There may be a little bit of scarring going on there. I don't know. We're going to find out when we go to turn it, for sure. But right now, we can, we're working on reinstalling the pinion gear. Slide that anti-reverse dog back. Push that in pinion gear in, get it seated, and that's a perfect replacement there. We're going to look for those two little screws to do the hold down screws for the bearing. One goes on each side. Grabbing that. There we go. Put the other one up top. This has got, these are steel screws. We've mentioned the rust. If you want to put a little bit of oil on there, try to be a, a little bit of proactive in being a rust inhibitor. I'll go ahead and do that. Next up then, and this is where you were taking your pictures. That was a good place to take your pictures. But okay, once we finish with the two screws then, we had these Little shim washers that go on top of the bearing, bearing shields, I guess. There was two of them on there when we took them off. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Then we have the, the anti-reverse eccentric. Remember what we said, top up, pointing backwards, and it hooks over this little stud here. So I'm going to go ahead and, it's still tight on that shaft, but let's make sure that it's working. Well, we, we know one thing, we've got the, the pinion gear turning with the re replacement of that, and that's how it should work. So when you go to back off your reel, it's kicking out, and kicking out will engage those teeth on the back of the rotor there, kind of traditional setup. Looks like we have a little bit of sand left over there. I tried my best to wash that sand off. All right, and we have to come below before we can put the rotor back on, so let's come on back and do the rest of this. Now. We have the cross wind gear, and I, as I said, the only fault with most of this is that um, it was dry, but uh, that's not unusual if you find a um, an entry-level reel. 
it's kind of almost an assumption that uh, whoever's going to be using this type of a reel is probably not going to maintain it well. Sometimes you'll find manufacturers actually over-grease these types of reels just so that uh, because they know that it probably won't be taken apart and uh, they're going to try and give it the longest lasting uh, that they can from the plant itself. All right, I'm just putting some grease around this. I'm going to put the crosswind gear in, snap that in place. The point of the crosswind gear goes down. Next step then is the crosswind block that has that channel in it that the eccentric gear rides on there. Get a little bit of grease in that, set that onto the block. Next up then is the main gear, and I did check that, and all of the teeth appear to be just like the uh, pinion gear above. They appear to be okay. It doesn't seem like there's scarring. I think I mentioned that earlier when we were taking it apart. That's always important. And then the other important piece is to make sure that the teeth on the back here also are in place, not missing or chipped. Sometimes if a reel seizes, and somebody goes to kind of muscle it out, they will break the teeth on the crosswind, and then you won't have the, uh, the spool going up and down. And, and I get plenty, not plenty, but I get enough of them in that I can say it happens more than I would probably like it to happen. Okay, just taking care that I can. Again, steel shaft. I'm using steel wall here, which is a mild abrasive. This is a 4.0 steel wall. I'm going to use my paper towel here to wipe off any potential uh, leftovers from the, uh, the hairs of that steel wall. We'll put a light coat of grease onto that. And somebody would might ask, why don't you put a heavy coat on? Well, the tolerances are inside this pinion gear here are tight, and if you put too much on, it's only going to accumulate around the collar here. Bring that down and just merge it so that the hole aligns with the screw hole and the shaft. Now we're looking for that flathead screw that's got a lot of rust on it. And again, it's a shame that these are used for, for uh, that they're using the steel here. And you can see it's steel. My magnetic tip is picking it up. But the uh, I guess they're taking a chance here that half the time this will be used in fresh water. Being fresh water or rust steel, so I don't, I'm not quite sure what, what the chances that they're taking. All right, the bottom is closed up then. We have the shim for the main gear is sitting on the side case, so let's go ahead and put that in. We've already taken the uh, Greasing of the other side. This is a plastic bearing uh, bushing. It doesn't need to be greased, but it doesn't hurt. And um, the other side, we put it on the stud for the the gear, so we've got that covered. Speaking of covering, we're going to go now and put that in. If you've lost a little V-shaped spring, this is where it goes. If you're working on a uh, on the um, Tiger, if you're looking for a spring that is a V-shaped spring, it goes here. It controls the tension on the anti-reverse override. I didn't take that out because it's not necessary to take that out. Let's just go ahead and seat that back together then. Now we've got a couple of case screws here. Should be one more. There it is. And one of these was, I believe one of them was smaller. Well, this is the one that goes inside. I know that because it doesn't have as much rust on it. Okay, we get the three here. So I'll go ahead and put them in. I prefer to hand tighten screws. I don't like the idea of using a mechanical screwdriver. But if you don't have the hand strength and you need to use a mechanical screwdriver, my recommendation is that you do not finish it all the way up, particularly on a reel like this that has a, <clears throat> basically a plastic case because you can shatter the case or you can put undue pressure onto the assembly. 
So go ahead and leave it a little bit short like that with your mechanical and then just go in and make the last turn or two by hand. You'll, uh, you'll appreciate it if you don't uh, break one, one of the reels that can shatter that way. And it's happened enough to me to know that uh, you don't want to take that risk. But we've already taken a risk on this one, right? We knocked that bearing off with a wrench and a hammer, and that's something I say don't do. So there you go. All right, then we have this bump guard on. And that goes next. There's a little tab on the back of the bump guard. You need to make sure that that tab fits into the slot here. And you can wrap it on. And then we have the uh, little screw. And this is why a parts tray helps because you can look into your parts tray and find the pieces. And the other reason it helps is when you're done you know you're done when the parts tray is empty. And I already have a couple of parts outside the parts tray, so that's not everything. But all right, last one goes into the, the top here, which was hiding under the rotor, which is why we couldn't put the rotor on before we finished the assembly below. So let's tie that down. Now we can grab our rotor. There's a little collar that uh, holds the rotor. Make sure that that's seated into the, the collar. And remember that this is a reverse threaded nut here, so when you're going to, to put it on, it needs to turn counterclockwise, which is opposite of what most of us are accustomed to in terms of how these, uh, these nuts get threaded. And I like to do this by hand as well because I want to make sure that I don't cross strip the uh, that nut going on. All right, this is a 12 millimeter. I use my Mitchell tool, but you can use a 12 millimeter screw uh, deep socket. You have to use a deep socket for clearing this, or you can just simply use, in this case, you don't have much of a ridge here, so you can just use a, a 12 millimeter um, open end uh, piece. All right, the, uh, there's no sense doing all of this. Uh, without testing first. I was going to go make sure that I can service the drags, but it doesn't make any sense to service the drags if this reel isn't working. So this is a good time to test the reel and see if we fixed it. I believe we did, but one never knows. You could have scarred teeth. Look at that. Woohoo! This reel's got a second chance. It's going fishing again. All right. Click ratchet goes on. Like I said, this reel might work better than it originally did because the uh, that burring in there is probably a better quality burring than what was in there that froze. All right, set that aside for a moment. Come over. If everything else had sand, good chance that the uh, the drag washers have sand. I'm expecting to see felt or Teflon as the drag in this. We'll know in a moment. Take that Pentagon clip out. That rides in a in a uh, inset there. See what we got. I believe we got felt. We have felt, and uh, you know it's an inexpensive way to do this. But a lot of manufacturers use felt, including Pen on the, the Pen Fierce One and Two. Now they just switched over to the HD 100 drags. But uh, here's the problem with felt: if it gets wet with steel washers, it holds the water, and the steel washers rust. This is a miserable drag system here. I don't know much about that. I'm going to hit these with the WD-40. I'm going to file down the rust. Actually looking for my flat file. Just like I did filing down the uh, piece on the, uh, the shim washers that go on top of the burn, the burn shields. They were the same. Now, if you didn't do this, if you just left that drag stack and said, you know what, new reel, obviously it got dunked in the water and somebody was bold enough to return this thing and claim that it malfunctioned. Well, if you didn't do that, you would tear these up. If you had just gone as far as we did and replaced the bearings, you would just tear those drag washers up the next time out because the, the pitting on these is just, uh, they just act as little, uh, 
picks or stubs and just uh, grab it. All right, that's two out of three. I'm gonna have to make sure I clean this bench off because I got a lot of that sandy junk sitting in that oil solution there. And I will. And I will. So that's the problem with the sand. Sand gets everywhere and it kind of gets hard. So let's wipe that off. Put that on a section of the bench where I wasn't uh, using all of that. Well, it's ugly, but it's smooth, so it will operate properly. Do that one more time, wipe it off. And that's smooth. There's nothing you can do, you can't file felt washers, but the sequence here is going to be a felt washer, and it's going to be one of the round ones, and it's going to be the middle one is always the eared washer, and then the top one is the same as the bottom one. All right, so let's just, I'm going to grab the cleanest one. I'm going to put that in the channel here. We're going to use fishing reel oil to give that a good soaking. The reason you do that is that felt washers are prone to tear if they become brittle. And uh, to prevent the tearing, you keep them oiled. So felt washers get oil. Leather washers and uh, fabric type washers like that get the... Uh, drag washer or fishing reel grease and carbon text or hard washers kind of optional you really don't need anything on them and then Teflon you don't need anything on Teflon because Teflon by its nature is a self lubricating product so that's why I said you probably would get either felt or Teflon in here again the, the manufacturers are thinking who's the person is going to buy this probably isn't going to maintain it or treat it much more than just as a casual use of wheels, so they, uh, they kind of let it go. And that's unfortunate because I know guys that have these shaped spears that fish them every day. All right, there's your spool. Just gonna make sure that that uh, drag assembly works fine. I got some kind of mold on this thing here, it looks like, so I'm gonna take that off. Not right now, but I do recommend that the uh, line be removed with an annual service there we go we have it's smooth enough and then it does lock down just because of what it is I'm just going to remember to use some penetrating oil onto the joints not because it needs it but because we know the history of this one just wipe it down quickly penetrating oil is not a lubricant ah look at that there's a gentle reminder I hit my my parts tray in that little lockdown where the uh, rotor nut just popped out. Now, there you go. That's another reason why I use these parts trays. Let's get that off. There's a little hole here for that. You don't have to take everything off. Just move your axle shaft to the high point because it's uh, magnetic. It'll hang to that screwdriver. Find the hole it ties it down to. Just put that back in. And now we're ready to close it up. All right. Now the parts tray is empty. The spool is on. The drag adjuster is on. Final test. And I will remove this. I don't like moldy line. Look at that. This one's going fishing again. Nice and smooth operation. Bell works. Bearing's been replaced. We found out why this reel failed. One ugly bearing throws into a, a pinion gear. We found a safe way to take it out. Kudos to Bill for sending in the Kroll or Croil. And uh, it, it freed it up enough that we were able to knock it off by reversing a uh, closed end wrench. And a little quick shot with a hammer here after we protected the top teeth by putting the uh, the rotor nut back on. Again, not a recommended procedure, but if you think the reel is done and you can't get replacement parts and it's your last last hope, well, you know, that's a risk you take. And uh, in this case, it worked properly, but I wouldn't recommend hitting every reel with a hammer. So that's it. That's the Shakespeare Tiger. This one's going fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, uh, please subscribe if you have a question about this or any kind of uh, fishing reel question. Maybe you got something open on your desk and you're stuck. Uh, go ahead and leave that in the comments. I will try to answer it. And again, if you're a first responder, if you're essential personnel, if you're law enforcement, healthcare, teachers, everybody who's trying to help us uh, 
combat this pandemic and get well again uh, as a nation. Well, then thank you for everything you do. And please stay tuned. Thanks for watching it during your, uh, your downtime. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.